Hey guys, it's tutorial time. Today we're going to be working on my Ahsoka Tano poster. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to show you how to do the sun and how to blend that into the space. We're going to do the sky down at the bottom over Alderaan and we're even going to get into some of the glow of the lightsabers. So I'm really looking forward to showing you guys how I really start to add color to a piece. It's going to be really exciting. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are on the table. <clears throat> Looking at what I got to do here to get started on the background. Um, it's very exciting for me to, to just think about finally getting going on this. I'm going to start with the background today. And when I look at this, I've got two challenges. Um, I'm starting very hot up here with the sun blending into the space, but then it's very cool down here in the background, um, the, the landscape of Alderaan. So I'm going to be working up into dark from this way and out into dark from this way. So let's start with the sun. I got this nice photo reference of a, of a blazing star that's kind of haloing Ahsoka. A couple things. I don't want to just go white with it. I don't want it to be that bright because her head tails are going to be white. She's really going to be the focus. So I want this to be um, a background element. So I want to stay very yellow with it. Yellow and orange and red. So I've got three yellows that I think might work here. I've got deco yellow. Uh, what is this? Canary yellow and sunburst yellow. I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Now I could just start working on the drawing. Um, I might get it right. But what I, what I do sometimes is just take a scrap of the paper that I'm working on I just kind of test them out. So that's deco yellow. It's canary yellow. That's sunburst yellow. Now, I want to be able to go darker than this and lighter than this. So looking at that, I, I'm thinking canary yellow is what I want to use just to get started. It's just a first step, just a um, an initial color. So I'm going to start with canary yellow. Got my knife here. What I'm going to do is just start working yellow in. The underdrawing has uh, you know some of the sunspots lightly called out so I'm just going to kind of work around those. And we're just going to do this for a little while. Just start noodling light in here. There's no... I mean, it's hard to mess up at this stage. Because all of this is going to be toned over. Just like with skin tones. Kind of my goal is to just get a nice flat color started. So I'm just going to start working on this. I'm just going to start with this side and we'll kind of demonstrate on this side. So I'm just going to start working yellow in. So we're still just kind of working canary yellow in. Kind of fun to noodle around all the ships and just start to see them uh, punching out of the the light these will be the ships will be mostly silhouetted at least the ones in the far background not being too too careful on my first pass dog's going crazy upstairs because a bike is riding by. Sorry about that. So here again, just kind of noodling around the noodling around the ships. So 
So I've got a nice flat tone started. Now I'm going to go through and add a little punch of color in places. So with this I want to start to be a little more careful. I'm going to sharpen my pencil up a little bit. And this is so saturated, so I'm, I'm going to have to go heavier with the yellow. And canary yellow is such a hard yellow. It's, uh, it's kind of green. I mean, it's just almost green. It's like this kind of neon, really kind of an ugly yellow. But this is just the first layer, so we're going to be tweaking this with some orange and red and stuff, so it'll, it'll end up being really pretty. So I'm going to kind of firm this up all through over all all throughout the sun just kind of give it a little a little oomph and then we're going to come back with some orange okay so that's pretty good Pretty good. <clears throat> so I've got a nice even tone of uh, canary yellow down over the whole thing. A couple things I want you to notice about what's happening. I don't know if you can see it. So the underdrawing bits where the sunspots were kind of coming through, I went right over those. It wasn't a matter of blending it or anything, but just lightly going over it kind of modified the color. So it knocked it back a little bit. Um, took some of the darkness out, but it's it's still there. It's got, you know, it's an underdrawing. So it's still providing some tone and some shape to it. Now, when I go over those things with uh, the darker colors, the oranges and the reds and whatnot, it's going to get even more uh, modeled and it's going to become more colorful. So that's important. Even at the edges here, I started just kind of, I hate the word blending because I'm not blending it, but um, but kind of ghosting the color over just to knock it back and it's going to give a place for the orange and the reds to come in over that underdrawing and, and start a nice gradient. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is take that uh, sunburst yellow that I tried at the beginning and I'm going to start um, working that in. It'll be just, it, it won't be a big difference, but it's just going to start to provide a glow. So I'm going to do this and kind of go along the edges and along, you know, we're going to bring it in, start bringing it in some in the center. It's just going to be a little difference, not, not a lot. So I'm not going to take, you know, a lot of time with it. But I just want to start to get a nice gradient and a nice glow cooking here. Okay, so I've worked most of the edge with sunburst yellow. I actually went up, went ahead and did a lot of the center too. I just felt like the, the base color needed to be a lot warmer than canary yellow made it. So I'm just finishing up kind of the nooks and crannies with sunburst yellow. Warming it up a little bit, brightening it up. There. So we got a nice, nice yellow, glowy ball. So now I'm going to really start to add some color and some form. I'm going to switch over to orange. See here in my reference where the sunspots show up and where it starts to, the edge of the star, where it starts to fade into, into space, that's where I'm going to start to pick up orange. So, again, very light, very light touch. I'm not blending anything. I'm not using any pressure, really. 
just going to start noodling in orange. You can see it starts to pick up pretty quick. I can still see the very light line I used in my underdrawing to kind of define the edge of the, the main part of the star. So that's kind of my guide. So a lot of this is just working, just working it nice and gently, building up color for right now. And I'm not afraid, again, to, to work that right into the underdrawing. You can kind of see it's affecting it just a little bit. It all adds to that, to that glow. You want this nice, soft glow translucent buildup of layers of color. So I'm going to keep working around the edge and then I'm going to start here in the middle and we'll, we'll come back and I'll, I'll kind of show you how that works. Okay, I've got the halo pretty much done. I'm just going to Feather it a little bit. So now let's pick up in the middle. See, so we've got all this nice orange happening here and some dark. So I'm going to start by just kind of working into that underdrawing. Picking up the swirls and Actually finish that sentence. Swirls and stuff. Sunspots and things. And again, just very light. Kind of using a circular motion. What's nice is, with this technique, if I get all the way to the end of this, this color build up and realize that, now nah, it's not quite yellow enough, I can go back over the whole thing with yellow and tone it back a little bit. So I'm going to kind of just use this swirl stroke here, just all throughout the center, keep that going. And you'll see I'm, I'm moving pretty quick. And what's nice is that when you take time on the underdrawing, a lot of the work is done for you. Um, all the information is here. You're just kind of now toning stuff. At least at this stage. There's more detail that's coming, but... You've already got the information. So before before I fade out and come back here, let me show you. I, I love doing this. So you've got all this backlighting. You want to kind of establish a glow on the objects in front. So with orange, I'm going to start doing a little outlining on these TIE fighters. I'm also going to come back and do this with, with red, just to get a nice little glow started on the edges of these objects. I love this. I love this backlighting technique. Okay, so I'm going to finish this with the rest, with the rest of the star, and I'll pop back. Okay, so I'm kind of finishing up with the orange here. I'm going to give Ahsoka a nice 
bit of backlighting outline to So leave that kind of where it is for the moment. Oh, I do want to get some here. I want to get some hot spots. Orange. you have to press you know a little harder so it's getting there's some pressure happening here I'm letting the pencil get a little duller a lot duller because it helps the pencil just kind of do its thing <clears throat> so there so now we're starting to get some variety and some texture in the in the Sun so now grab crimson red and we're gonna do the same thing we're just gonna keep building up this glow around the edge now I'm gonna I'm gonna push it a little farther into the into the underdrawing, into the space. And I'll bring that, that red glow subtly out just a little farther. Probably a little more pressure happening here than, than there was before. And you can you can start to see this. This is really starting to pop. Color, we're laying down some serious color now. So I'm going to kind of go back over the same areas that I did with orange. Just keep adding value <clears throat> to it. Keep building up that glow. And I'm going to do the same backlighting outline with red. So I'll do this all the way around the, uh, the glow and the star, and then I'll start hitting some of the areas in the middle, too. <clears throat> so I'm finishing up the halo. <clears throat> it's pretty good. Um, and I've, you'll notice how much I've extended the red into the background. <clears throat> when you start drawing over the underdrawing, that much, you do have to use some uh, pretty heavy pressure. I know I'm always saying work lightly, but when you get out here, you, you have to start pressing. And I would probably wait a couple hours till I did anything else on this. Um, letting it rest seems to help it take more color again, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know why. Um, but like when I let it rest overnight and come back and do more, it seems to do a little better, anyway. So now I'm going to start 
working the inside a little bit. And as I'm doing this, I, I, I can already tell that my yellow is not strong enough. Um, so at the end, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go back over with some yellow to, to juice up the yellow. I don't want it to go red. Um, this isn't Krypton's sun. We want Superman to have his powers, so we want a yellow sun. Anyway, so I'm going to start bringing out some of the some of the darks the same way I did with the orange, uh, just not as much. So these are going to be the darkest places with the sunspots. I want you to look over here too. I did this off camera, this side of it. Um, you see where the sun flare was, how much it's starting to, to blend back into the background. Um, it was kind of this obvious bulge off the side of the sun, but now it's, it's starting to, to knock back into the background. And as we go in with the space colors and go over that too, it's going to push it back even farther, so it's going to start to be really subtle. <clears throat> See here I'm back to just using kind of light, light pressure though, little circular motions. Um, I want it to look nice and swirly and random. And even if it looks a little too obvious, that's okay because when we go back over it with yellow, um, it's going to knock it back. So I'm going to do this. I'm, going to, I'm not going to go out too far um, with it, but I'm, I'm going to finish up the, the center area. And then we're going to take a break from the top and we're going to move down to the bottom because I want to start working up this way too because the rest of the colors that we use in the space are going to have to fade into this also. This is one of the difficult parts of the technique. Um, and where you got to just kind of trust your process. Because leaving this still kind of flat and without as much form as I want is tough. You, you, you want to finish it. You want it to look perfect. And it's not going to look perfect until the end, really. So you, you got to learn to leave it um, and just let it be what it is, knowing that you're going to come back, knowing that you're going to fix it and finish it. Um, but that can be hard. Um, you just got to kind of kind of get used to that. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got the star kind of where I want it for right now. I've got the red worked in. It still needs a little more work. Um, it's not done, but I'm going to take a break on it for a couple of reasons. One, I, I mentioned we're going to be working down into the sky here, so I need to get this area done so we can start to work these two areas together. Um, the second reason is for a little mental break. I want to leave this alone for a while. Um, I've been working on it for a couple of hours. I want to just leave it alone. I want to just do something else, come back to it, let it sit for a little while, and look at it with, a, with fresh eyes. So we're going to move down to the um, skies over Alderaan. Now, in my reference here, I'm not going to stick exactly to it, but I like, I like the clouds. I like the way the clouds push the landscape forward so I'm going to start working some clouds in just using white um, it's not going to stay white we'll knock it back with some blue but but I want to start popping this background or the, the foreground out so again just some really light pressure Start wisping some clouds in. Alderaan's a nice, cool, snowy place, which works great because of all this heat up here. This is going to be nice and cool, blues and greens down here. So 
I'm working nice and light. I don't want to overcommit myself to these clouds. Um, I don't want them to be giant blocks of white. I can always go back and add more white if I need to, but I, it's going to be a lot harder to take it away. So I'll work this, this one in over here. I'm going to go do the other side too. Um, I don't want to make you sit here and watch me scribble clouds. But th this is, you know, this is a good start. Just again, light pressure. Um, you can see how I'm holding it. I'm not, uh, I'm not cranking down on it. This is just barely wispy, wispy pressure. Hardly anything. Just building it up slowly. So I'm going to finish these, and then we're going to come back, and I'm actually going to knock in the cores of the lightsabers, too. Um, Ahsoka has white lightsaber blades, so it makes sense that they have a nice white core, but we're going to have to add some glow to it uh, that makes sense with the background. But we're going to start with white. So I'm going to come back and do that. So I'm just finishing up these clouds. When you get to the you know, the parts that you really want to be solid, you, you do start using a little more pressure. It's okay. Um, clouds are white, right? <clears throat> I wanted to point out, too, you know, I've got this, this great reference. I think it's from, I think it's a screenshot from Knights of the Old Republic. Don't stick so closely to your reference, though. I mean, the, the clouds are in specific places here, but I'm using the clouds to highlight things that I want to highlight, to push out the, the landscape, to, to break out um, the details on her arm. Over here, same thing, to kind of highlight the edge of her, of her hip. Um, so use these elements the way they work best for you. Just because it's in the reference doesn't mean you have to do it exactly when you're drawing. Um, do what works. So you can see I've got little little wispy areas of clouds here. So that's that's looking pretty good. We'll work the sky up into that later. But now let's let's take a crack at one of these lightsabers. Um, I'm going to start by I want to erase out this line as much as I can because I don't really I don't want it to have an edge. I want a nice guide, but I don't want it to have an edge. So. Take my white. Um, I need my silver reference here. Not that that's. Not that there's a lot of detail in the sabers. I actually drew the saber blades in just to have a straight, have a straight line. So I'm just gonna kind of again just start working. Real lightly. The core of the blade obviously is going to be more solid than the outsides. And when we come back with color in the dark areas of space and the and the sky we're going to kind of work into this a little bit to give it a nice glow so I'm not too worried about making it perfect um, because it's we're going to go over it again anyway so I'm going to start by just kind of laying down a flat into the clouds a little bit because again I don't want a line where the lightsaber ends the 
other thing too is we're, we're not going to finish this right now because um, the the very middle of the blade, the really glowy hot part, um, I'm going to do with paint at the end. So that's not going to be finished with pencil. So then we got a nice tone. Now, right? Sharpen my pencil. I'm going to go a little nuts here. I'm going to use a piece of paper. myself a shape to define. So I'm going to just nail this. So I'm going to fill that shape in hot and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you how I feather that. Okay, so I've got the core of the blade done. Nice and bright. So now before I have a panic attack, I'm going to go and finish this. So I'm going to work away from my edge into the, into the glow and just feather it out. And I'm going to be really noodly with this and make sure I get all the little, the little spots because I want this to be a nice, beautiful feathered glow. And while I'm working on this, I want to mention um, the model for Ahsoka that you see here in my reference. Um, this is the, the lovely human being, uh, Ray Kennix, amazing cosplayer. Um, I'm thrilled to be working with her on this. Um, she does such a great Ahsoka. And she was kind enough to work with me on this project. I'll throw a uh, information card up at the end um, with her Instagram account and her YouTube channel on it. You can actually see the uh, teaser trailer for the fan film that this poster is based on on her YouTube channel. It's really cool. So thank you, Ray, for, for working with me on this. So feathering this out. Now you'll see this looks pretty wide for a lightsaber blade, right? That's okay because we're going to come back at the when we do the rest of the background and work back in with a little color. So that'll thin the blade up a little bit. Gotta sharpen the pencil. The sharper your pencil is, the more you can work into the, the little texture that the, the paper has. Um, the texture is great because it picks up the pencil really well, but when you're working you know, real noodly like this, you gotta fill in that, that texture. You don't wanna leave the grain of the paper. So, almost done here. This is a good place for me to stop for a little while. Um, I'm gonna go do something else. I'm gonna fill a couple of Etsy orders. Um, post a progress picture on Instagram. Let my mind take a break from this. I'm starting to get a little antsy. Um, I, I do this throughout the day. I take lots of breaks. I, I 
switch gears and do other necessary things, um, work on another project, whatever. Um, if I work too long on something, I start to make mistakes, I start to get antsy and fidgety, and it's just better if I walk away from it for a few minutes. Which honestly is a lot of fun. It's nice to switch things up and do different things throughout the day. So anyway, there's, there's the lightsaber. We're gonna come back, we're gonna do the sky and start working up into the space. It's looking really good. We're, we're really making a lot of progress. Okay, so we're back from break. Had a nice workout, had lunch. Now I'm ready to tackle the uh, sky on Aldron. So I've got the clouds in, got the lightsabers knocked in. So I started <clears throat> by doing the same thing I did with the sun colors. Tested out some blues. Just pulled all the blues out of my box and uh, tested them on a scrap piece of paper to see what I like. So I've chosen three that I want to use to work my way up. We've got, what is this? Cloud blue, light cerulean blue, and cerulean blue. And this, I can tell you right now, we're going to use sparingly because it's pretty intense. So, <clears throat> let's grab a pencil extender. Sharpen the pencil up. And we're just going to start. So what I'm going to do here see this is pretty darn close to white so I'm just gonna kind of work this in around the clouds overlapping the clouds a little bit it's just different enough that I can kind of I can see it um, start to a transition. So after I've kind of worked it in around the clouds, I want to get as much out of this blue as I can, so I'm going to add a little pressure and start to build some sky blue. I'm going to do the other side too, and I'm going to go do um, this side. And we'll come back and we'll start the next color. Okay, <clears throat> so you'll notice I brought the cloud blue all the way up to where it kind of starts to get into the dark underdrawing. Now, something I noticed right away, this is really all starting to blend together. So it's a little scary, but we're going to go in with um, light cerulean blue now, and this is a lot brighter blue, so I think this is where our work's going to start. So I'm just going to go in, again, working around the clouds. I want to keep some nice variety, the clouds to keep them, you know, wispy and natural looking. So in some places I'm going to dig into the cloud a little bit, some places I'm not. You can see already, this is a much more saturated blue. So we're starting to get some of that sky blue color. So I'm gonna work up to the glow of the lightsaber. I'm gonna tackle that separately here in a minute. Now after I get beyond the clouds, it's going to go a little quicker.
is what I want to do. I'll come back down to the clouds in a minute. What I want to do with this now is start to carry this up to where the sky is going to fade into space. So I'm just going to bring this color right up. You can see I'm kind of going over the underdrawing. It's going to make sense here in our next couple of steps. So a little bit more pressure. Just putting it down. Sharpen the pencil a little bit. So with the lightsaber, that blue glow to kind of follow up in, into space farther than the, the sky. That's going to help set it apart a little bit. Because Ahsoka's blades, like we talked about earlier, are white, so they don't really have color to them. Um, they got to glow a little bit, so I'm, I guess I'm assuming a, a nice light blue aura makes a little bit of sense. Now remember, we're not done with this either. We've got a couple more layers of color to do. And the lightsabers won't really be finished until the very end when I use paint to really pop that glow. a little wispier areas. Okay, so I'm going to finish up with, with this color and we'll come back and do the last couple. Okay, so I got light cerulean blue in here. I actually went back and lisped up a little more white just to kind of blend the light areas in a little bit. I didn't like how, how stark the clouds were against the blue. In fact, I may do a little bit more here. It's a nice thing about the technique. You can always kind of go back and subtly modify things aren't quite right I want it to look like a like a bright winter day do a little bit of that anyway come back and noodle that later so what I'm going to do now, take cerulean blue, very, very bright, very saturated blue. So to avoid surprises, I'm going to start up here where I know I want it to start to get dark. And I'm going to start laying it in.
will start bringing it down. This probably isn't going to come down too far towards the horizon, um, which is nice and easy. This will go really quick. I also want to keep my pencil nice and sharp for this too because I really just want a nice smooth gradation. This is clear skies up here, so I don't want any really any variation. I just want a nice smooth transition. Bring this up right up into the end of drawing. You can see it's really toning that nicely. So this is not burnt or dark umber anymore. This has been um, modified just like a traditional painting technique where you kind of glaze over the, the underdrawing, the underpainting. Um, it's exactly what we're doing here. Just glazing over the underdrawing to transition the color. So before I go finish the other parts of that, let's work the lightsaber a little bit. come back to this with paint and really oops and really pop that glow right at the end okay so I'm going to finish the rest of this and then we're going to finish off the sky and transition it right up into the star okay so the sky's done. This blue extends all the way up here. Now the last two colors that we're gonna use are gonna really bring this all together. So I'm gonna take a dark purple. We're gonna go back to the to the star. And I'm I'm really gonna start using pressure here because the, the underdrawing is pretty thick. So to be able to get some of this down, I'm going to have to press a little bit. I'm going to, when I get to the, you know, the red, I'm going to overlap it a little bit. To blend that in. What I really want to do is kind of fill this with 
this dark purple. Okay, so nice solid tone, dark purple down. Last thing to do is to kind of bring it down into the sky and overlap it. I just want a nice gradation. Notice me turning the paper a lot. Um, that is to work it from different angles. Not only does it provide a little cross hatching and a nice, a nicer blend to the colors, but it also works the texture of the paper from different angles and provides a more thorough coverage. And the last thing, the last color we want, indigo blue. It's a nice dark blue. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the sky. I want to bring this nice midnight blue feel down into our landscape. brought it down into the sky. Now I want to come up with it into the space area. And this is as much pressure as I ever use on these pencils. The paper's taken just about as much as it's going to, but my goal here on the edges is to push this as close to black as I can. And you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, why not just use black? I, ve I very rarely use black unless it's the color I'm using for the underdrawing. If I'm working on a gray paper, I'll use black for the underdrawing. But in this case, especially this close to such a heavy light source, I don't want to use black. Black will, will flatten it out. Um, this is so much more interesting, keeping it colorful. Um, it's still going to be very dark. And at the end, when I put the stars in the background, it's really going to read as black anyway. But a very rich black. If I were to go through and put black on the edges, here it would become the darkest thing in the whole piece and just, it would just draw your eye, and I, I don't want the space in the background to draw your eye. So, I'm gonna keep it just off of black by using the blue. There will not be a single black spot on this piece.
that is about it. Look how nice and dark this got, how, how blended it came down into the sky. Now one last thing I want to do as I'm looking at this, I see there's just a lot of a lot of blue. So I want to add, I got a, what is this, light aqua. I'm going to add just a hint of some green. I want this to say winter, and this kind of green tinge to the sky. I'm just going to push that a little bit and break up the blue. So that's about it guys for the background. Now there's more work to do in the lightsabers, there's more work to do in the star, but a lot of that's going to come towards the end when I start using paints. So I'm going to end this here. Um, I hope you found this interesting. Um, I'd like to do another tutorial maybe on the skin tones or the armor or something, but I'm going to end this one here. So this was the background of the Ahsoka Tano piece. guys are still here? Uh, well, okay. Uh, so so here, here's where we ended up. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'd really like to thank Ray again, Ray Kennex, for working with me on this. Um, and I'm going to throw an information card up at the end with her YouTube and her Instagram feed on it. You should follow her. She's great. She's a great cosplayer. So, and if you like the content on this video, like it. Subscribe. I'm going to have more tutorials, more behind-the-scenes stuff coming up soon. So I really appreciate you sticking with the whole tutorial if you made it this far. Um, watching me draw, I know, probably isn't super fun, but I hope it was informative. So I'll see you guys next time. Go draw something.